then totally there are about some 8 to 9 EEG patterns, classical EEG patterns. Spike and wave pattern of absent seizures. So only how do you recognize hips arrhythmia? Then centrotemporal uh, epilepsy, right? Uh, so these are the Rolandic epilepsy it is called. Similarly, you should identify how to identify SSP, etc. Five year old with evaluation of abnormal movements of the head, mildly spastic lower extremity, bilateral Babinski, enlarged left sternocleidomastoid, her head turns towards the right throughout the examination. So, what do you typically find in her MRI is an important question. So, typically a young patient has got an acute onset of cervical dystonia and on the imaging in the cervical cord, typically there is an intramedullary lesion, right, inside the medulla, intramedullary lesion and intramedullary lesion can be a ependymoma. So, once more do you know intramedullary, then extramedullary, intradural, extramedullary, extradural, do you know that? Oh, come on. You have to be master on spinal cord masses. So, you have got a 30 to 40 minute video on both anatomy to medicine.com and you medico, right? So, there you try to review, then you will, uh, you have all neurology lectures in that. Last 15 years, we are completely unemployed, no other job than to teach morning, afternoon, evening. Eki kaam tha. So, padake padake at least 5 to 6 versions of uh, the same topic is being uh, delivered, video captured and then put into anatomy to medicine.com and now you medico. So, you can always go, if you have done the question wrong, go to the high yield topic list discussion. There you go to neurology, there you go to the list of topics in that spinal cord tumors. So, my Atma will come out of that. And then it will explain you what all I am going to explain you now. So, it is only a question of your review, right. Now, if you look at the spinal cord, there is a central canal, right. So, you have a dura. So, typically you are having what is called as the medulla. So, there are tumors that can arise from the medulla which are called intramedullary. Then you have dura, outside the dura you call it as extra dural and inside the dura you call it a, but outside the medulla you call it as intra dural. These two belong to extra medullary location. Now, if you look at intramedullary lesions, commonly intramedullary means this is like a gufa. This is like a gufa, cave. Inside the cave, who will be sitting? Sage will be sitting and doing tapasya. Right? I am not very good in illustrations, but tapasya. So, you remember sage. Yes means syringomyelia. Syringomyelia is a intermedullary lesion. There is a syrinx which is a fluid filled dilatation of the central canal. Then astroglio, astrocytoma, glioma are one and same. Then E is ependymoma. So, these uh, syringomyelia, glioma or astrocytoma and ependymoma are the feature lesions that are seen in intramedullary lesions. Then you have neurofibromas and meningiomas. They typically arise from the dura and most often they are intramedullary in location. Then Intradural in uh, location, in extramedullary place. Then what is extradural? 
metastasis whenever a tumor comes to the spinal cord it is being stopped from coming inside by the dura it remains in the extra dura immediately as you go home three important homeworks if you have not done you are missing me right you have to study you have to review go to the video library and review in the neurology dr murli already taught this corus medullaris versus corda equina 10 minute lagao iske liye 10 minutes you should understand the differences how does the clinically present which presents with a funicular type of pain which presents the radicular type of pain which will have the typical babinski positivity which will typically have a saddle anesthesia so differences between corners and corda then intradural versus extradural intramedullary versus extramedullary right so these ek ghanta time investment karke you have to master these three important topics then only you are doing justice to being my students so i am very happy 14 plus online viewers are there every sunday i want to see at least a uh, 100 viewers online course after this session is over we will put it on the u medico app uh, you click on the test you will all the three videos will be available but live is uh, always live the brain biopsy has been shown and uh, elderly man with dementia so what do you have you are having a spongy form picture uh, sorry not spongy form you have a sorry hematoxyl in eosinophilin stain neurofibrillary tangles you are able to find so the neurofibrillary tangles are an indication of alzheimer's disease is what you need to understand 12 year old girl has left sided weakness she is being found by her mother who quickly calls 911 there it is emergency and uh, dense left hemispheres along with difficulty seeing out her left visual field a mri reveals a stroke so angiogram has been done so there is a decreased flow and uh, typically large number of collateral vessels are being found and uh, this kind of an appearance is called as moya moya disease it is on a it is like a whenever you pass contrast the contrast will rise like a smoke from the top of a hut which is a typical feature in japan right that's how the name moya moya has come into picture so um uh, i leave the literature for you now the figure is demonstrating some of the developmental abnormalities uh, i mean which developmental abnormality so what do you find in this clinical condition so typically there is a uh, focal polymicrogyria and loss of white matter along with hydrocephalus the gyra is lost hydrocephalus is there white matter is decreased unlike the other side so it is an example of polymicrogyria is the condition 35 year old comes with tremor rigidity on examination bilateral resting tremor is there she is a festinant gait bradykinesia everything reminds you of parkinsonism and ct scan is being shown and what do you see on the ct scan it's called fars disease where there is a calcification of the basal ganglia and the cerebellum along with parkinsonism like uh, features is called fars disease this is also a useless question very rare they won't ask this 18 year old last two years initially his left leg went numb for several months and uh, bilateral babinski brisk reflexes in the arm weakness in the arms that's what you are able to see and the mri has been shown so there is a step wise progression of features classically and uh, the mri 
uh, and all these features are pointing towards his um, uh, cervical cord basically cervical cord because why cervical cord lower limbs are showing uh, how did you get uh, idea that it is cervical cord typically lower limbs are showing umn features upper limbs are showing lmn features then the problem is at the cervical if there is any problem at the cervical level then the descending corticospinal tract get affected cut off so the lower part will behave like a umn and uh, it will directly compress the antrochonsils in the cervical area and uh, that that behaves like a lmn because the uh, antrochonsils are injured okay so that is a typical thing that typically multilobulated lesion with a mixed intensity in the cervical area with a myelopathy which is suggestive of a av malformation 45 year old with acute contusion mri is being shown to you so what is the most likely diagnosis after seeing through the mri so it is called as marchiava bignami disease this is a very favorite question of examiner in chronic alcoholism marchiava bignami disease alcohol jada piye to badnami ho jaye bignami ah alcohol ke sath mirchi ke bajje bhi khate whisky ke sath so marchiava bignami disease is what you need to remember when it comes to alcoholism now 83 year old with atrial fibrillation cd scan has been done and uh, on examination he is somnolent and he has got third nerve palsy dilated pupils and uh, the ct is showing a huge subdural or epidural subdural hemorrhage excellent and the midline is shifted so that is the reason decompression is the one which you need to do 66 year old with memory loss frontal lobar hemorrhage word finding difficulty mri is being shown to you so it is a typical case of cerebral amyloid angiopathy and uh, uh, typically uh, 66 year old presenting with a memory loss and uh, mri shows the classical features of amyloid angiopathy uh, with a multiple stroke evolving over a period of time is a important indication of cerebral amyloid angiopathy so 75 year old comes with a leg weakness could not walk and his neurological examination shows the paralysis and on the mri you can see the presence of a bleed which is happening typically in the subarachnoid space so it is an example of a extradural hemorrhage in the subarachnoid uh, uh, area then uh, actually it's a extradural hemorrhage that's a better word not uh, subarachnoid calcification of the adrenals see this is the area of the adrenal gland so bilateral adrenal calcification is a important feature which is a feature which you seen in case of edison's disease when the adrenals are completely destroyed by the autoimmune injury hypoadrenalism of every cause is not called edison edison is only used when there is a autoimmune destruction of the adrenals and hypoadrenalism then you call it as hypoadrenal edison in india what is the most common cause for the adrenals to get destroyed hum is desh ke vasi hai jis desh mein tb behti hai tuberculosis is the most common cause for the adrenal dysfunction and the hypoadrenalism in the west it is the edison now chest x ray 5 days after myocardial infarction is showing a significant dilatation after mi what are the complications of mi so mi can lead to development of ischemia to the papillary muscles papillary muscle injury lead to mr acute mr will put a acute overload on the heart and the heart will go into dilatation so there is a reason it's a case of uh, uh, one possibility is papillary muscle rupture 
but uh, they are saying within five days this is happening within five days means the only possibility is the ischemia is so severe that the ventricular myocardium became so thin that it led to the rupture my heart is broken we say no so this is an example of a heart broken state so there is a dilatation now uh, which is this dermatological condition and what is the drugs that you use so classically whenever the patient is having pityriasis versicolor hypopigmented patches any drug can be effective but not grisofulvin it has no activity on pityriasis versicolor similarly grisofulvin has no action on candida whereas it has only action very well on the dermatophytes so what is the most effective drug in this condition they are all the secondary syphilis typically the copper uh, colored patches on the palm so you use benzathione penicillin now the hypogonadism obesity mental retardation and uh, the fundus examination is typically and there is also polydactyly and fundus examination is showing uh, the bony spicule appearance that is called as bony spicule appearance um, which is typically a feature in retinitis pigmentosa so all this combination is typically a feature of lorenz moon beadle syndrome many times asked in the neat pg exam you should answer it correctly 